We've reached the end of the Set Theory Simplified series. In this episode, we'll explain complements, subsets, and supersets, and reflect on where we are in our understanding of set theory. The complement of a set is the set that's formed from all the other pitches not included in the original set. This means that two complementary sets together make all 12 tones. The clearest way to see complementary sets is by looking at the black and white keys of a keyboard as an example of complementary sets. The white keys form the major scale set, while the black keys are the only keys we didn't use in the octave, and they form the pentatonic set. Since the black and white keys together form all 12 tones, this means that the major scale and pentatonic scale are complements of each other. As we can see in this example, complementary sets bear a rough resemblance to each other, especially in terms of interval content, yet they have different cardinalities. You will sometimes see fort charts list sets like 735 adjacent to their complement set 535, and as we can see, complementary sets always have the same rank number. A six note set always has the same interval vector as its complement, so if a six note set isn't complementary to itself, it must be a Z related pair with its complement. It's interesting to consider how sets that complete each other resemble one another. Subsets are sets that lie within bigger sets we call supersets. This means that supersets contain the same pitches as their subsets, plus extra pitches. We can think of a set like the major scale as a superset for smaller sets like the pentatonic scale and the major triad, because those sets are present within the major scale. In turn, we would say that the major triad and the pentatonic scale are subsets of the major scale. When a jazz soloist is looking for a scale to play over a chord, they are essentially looking for a superset that includes the chord being played, along with extra pitches to use for soloing. For example, a friend recently asked me what scale he could use melodically to play over a fully diminished chord. I told him the biggest scale or superset he could practically use is the octatonic scale. Interestingly, not only does the octatonic scale contain two diminished chords as a subset, it is also the complement of the diminished chord. There are, of course, several supersets that contain the fully diminished chord, and my friend ended up using a subset of the octatonic scale, 731. Sets are very interconnected in their relationships to each other as subsets and supersets. The front of Fort's book explaining set theory displays a web of connections, or family tree, of all subsets and supersets of a particular set and its Z pair. I'm leaving a link in the description again to an online set calculator that will tell you the subsets and supersets of any set upon request. I end the series with subsets and supersets to show that although we have learned to label sets and look up and understand their properties, the next step is to understand the vast web of connections between sets. Understanding which sets are a part of others helps us understand the broader context of how sets are applied. For example, remember that cool Scriabin chord we looked up called 528? It's important to realize that it's a subset of Scriabin's famous mystic chord. Is the mystic chord the main large set used in Scriabin's music, like the diatonic scale is for tonal music, or is it more like a subset of something even larger? I hope to go deep into that sort of analysis in my next series, Scriabin's Atonality. I would also like to make a series that systematically dives into these webs of connections between sets to help provide an overall understanding of the entire set universe. Let me know if you all are interested in the comments along with your thoughts on complements and supersets. This series has taught the fundamentals of set theory, yet there is so much more to learn on how to apply this knowledge. For instance, has it ever occurred to you that set theory can be applied to rhythm and microtonal scales? I hope you all continue down the rabbit hole with me to learn more. I need to give a big thank you shout out to Redditor UChordSpace for his help with the set chart of modes for coming up with the idea of ordering sets based on evenness. Thank you again to Vornska, and thank you all for watching this series, and I look forward to sharing more insightful content with you all, so please like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon.